do you remember what was your first paid project? Uh, it was a rock, actually. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Modeling a rock for, for 50 bucks. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You're listening to Art Heroes Podcast, the show to help you thrive as a digital artist. Tune in to learn how to transform your passion into a career. Get inspired by other kick-ass 2D and 3D artists and find out what it takes to be an art hero. Welcome to today's show, guys. I'm your host, Maria JD, and in today's podcast episode, we're chatting with Daniello D'Angelozzi, an Italian 3D artist famous for his character art for collectionists. Daniele made a big leap changing his career from biologist to a 3D artist at the age of 30 and never looked back. Let's get right into it and welcome Daniele. All right, let's get started. Okay, so we're now on air. Uh, yeah, you know, like before I go into everything, thanks so much for yeah. being on the podcast. It's great having you on the show, Daniele. Oh, thank uh, you very much. It's great <laughs> to be invited in the podcast. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, no, come on. It's amazing. Like, because also it's great to see your face again, because last time we met, it was like uh, in Italy, that not that yep. long ago. Yeah. So, you know, like now seeing you in your natural habitat, it's like being there again. Yeah. Um, yeah. absolutely love your room. Um, yeah, and, very cool, uh, very cool room, very messy, yes. but, but it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. But very, you know, like, I think it like kind of matches very much with, uh, with what you are. I don't know if you would agree. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 Matches very, perfectly because yeah. I am a messy person uh, with a lot of interests. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, uh, okay. Daniela, just, you know, like, uh, before anything, I really love what you do. And, uh, I think, you know, like, uh, I was just looking at your, art station now again quickly and i was like well this is uh, some new pieces that uh, that i haven't seen before are like absolutely yeah. stunning well like, thank you very much seriously yeah. like absolutely love that so you know like maybe we can just like go to like the very beginning kind of you know yeah. like uh, back to the roots i know you've got uh, uh, a very interesting story of uh, how everything started for you in oh, terms yeah. of you know like uh, um, digital art. Okay. Tell us your story. Yeah. What was the beginning for you? Yes, I, I ran into 3D art um, somewhat in a random way because uh, um, a bit more than 10 years ago, I was attending my PhD in biotechnology and I was uh, making my thesis, my final thesis, uh, and uh, wanted uh, to find something to create uh, nice images for my thesis. And so a friend of mine that uh, studied uh, in an art school suggested me to try this software that uh, was called ZBrush. And uh, <laughs> it really happened uh, really in a random way. Uh, so I, I downloaded this software, I tried it and fell in love. So uh, wow, where all started. Of course, um, this is, uh, you know, when you, when you tell the backstory, sometimes you, you tend to sugarcoat it. So uh, the truth is that, of course, uh, from the biology point of view, I really needed, didn't have a lot of opportunities in terms of work. So I simply made the math and uh, told myself, okay, uh, this is not the thing that I want to, to really do in my life, eight hours a day and uh, it doesn't pay very well so um, if i have to uh, somewhat uh, risk my life and uh, uh, let's try to make something that i like so uh, it was somewhat um, easy for me to to, to switch and uh, go into digital art because uh, i felt that this was uh, uh, what i really wanted to do in my life yeah. Okay. But like, did you have any artistic background whatsoever? Like, you know, uh, because from biology to digital art, it's, yeah. I'm sorry, we're talking not even the same life, you know, yeah. it's just like, uh, let's just forget everything. And, you know, like, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I didn't have any artistic background. Of course, since I was a kid, I was, I was uh, always interested in uh, creative stuff. So I also played music uh, uh, with the band and I was always interested in drawing, but, but it was uh, made uh, mostly as an hobby. Uh, okay. But of course, I always had uh, this inside of me. I mean, uh, the, the will to express myself and create something. Uh, so basically, I realized when I was 30 that uh, uh, that was the real thing that I wanted to do in my life. 
Yeah. 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 Like, I'm glad that you mentioned because I was just about to ask, you know, like, when did you make the transition? Because sounds like, you know, biology is such an investment in terms of time. Yeah. Well, I guess yeah. money as well. Yeah. But I'm sure you like, you put a lot of hours into studying that uh, yes. before like digital mm -hmm. art. Yes, yes. But, um, you know, probably when I was younger, I really didn't have the courage to, to take my own decision. So in, in some way, maybe I felt like uh, trying to be an artist uh, could be somewhat risky, could not pay off. Uh, so basically, I tried to take another route that I felt that could, uh, could become a, a, a real work, <laughs> yeah. paid. but then when, when you become older, I mean, when you, when you arrive at 30 years, uh, being 30 years old, uh, maybe you feel like uh, uh, this is somewhat your last opportunity to make a change. Uh, and so uh, in that moment, you really find the courage and say, okay, no, uh, I really want to try to find, to, to follow this other type of path. No matter Fine. if I spent a lot of time uh, studying in biology, also because biology is um, at all, nothing at all related uh, with, uh, with the art. Yeah. But, I mean, it's just... Yeah, well, uh, I mean, all trying. like, it makes sense. You know, some people when they turn 30, like buy fancy yeah. bikes, some people like make a tattoo and you just like transition to digital art. All yeah. right, like... <laughs> yeah, makes sense. <laughs> of course, yeah, exactly. 30 years old is the time when people make changes. Let's see what we think when we're like 55. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's... <laughs> but also, also because I think that um, when I was... Uh, 20, 25, uh, digital art was not so, so, um, so mainstream. Uh, yeah. And of course, also in terms of resources, uh, there was not uh, really a lot of stuff. So uh, let's say that, that um, when I made the transition, uh, it was really the, the very first times that, that the digital art uh, um, started to grow up. So uh, it was somewhat simple because before um, digital art didn't, didn't exist in okay, terms no, of digital really scouting, Absolutely, the yeah. technology is like still new. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, do you think you use some of your previous knowledge, you know, like from your other like biological life? <laughs> <laughs> oh, not really. Not really, because uh, even in terms of, uh, you know, when you, when you make digital art, you really have to have a strong knowledge about anatomy. But yes. uh, the anatomy that you, that you really study in biology is nothing related to aesthetic anatomy and, uh, and uh, uh, the anatomy of the forms. So you, you study anatomy more in terms of, uh, of functionality. Uh, so you are not used to observe how a particular anatomical structure, structure is done. Uh, of course, I think that um, my previous uh, study course at me because uh, I feel that uh, culture uh, overall uh, always helps uh, because it allows you to have um, a very cool mindset. Uh, and I, I see that this helped me a lot in terms of understanding things, uh, studying things because, uh, uh, yeah, I, I feel that, that I have a very um, scientific mindset uh, and I really can grab stuff um, quite easily. Okay, but like, yeah. how did you go? So, like, you know, uh, uh, how did you go about studying like uh, 3D? Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, like, with you, like, if you can uh, imagine yourself, like, you know, 10 years ago, you yeah. opened ZBrush yeah. that was like old and clumsy yeah. and absolutely non user friendly. Yeah. Like, I don't even know how you liked it. <laughs> <laughs> I know well, anyway, you had the, the chance to sculpt in, inside of a computer, like yes, uh, okay, play, but without no, I without understand. Yeah. Yes, yeah. so like you know, how did you go about learning this? Because now we've got all of these like resources, yeah. and like you know, YouTube is different level. Uh, yeah. So what did you do? And uh, you know, like I'll pair this with a question: How would you do it differently if you were to start today? Okay, yeah, good question. Well, basically, uh, when, when I decided to start, as I said before, uh, there were not a lot of resources. Uh, I'm, of course, uh, almost all self-taught. Um, so basically, I, I searched through the internet and found very few resources. Uh, back at the times, uh, I think that, uh, I know if I can, uh, I can mention them, but sure. there were uh, Nyomon Workshop and Nyomonology that made very nice videos. I really didn't have the money to attend the school. <laughs> so uh, I simply purchased some videos uh, 
and try to, to follow the forums. Uh, back in the days, there were the forums, the communities, uh, uh, so asking questions, uh, uh, stuff like that. Um, okay. Really nothing so, so special. Uh, just try to find the resources. Uh, there were not um, a lot of them, but there were, of course. Uh -huh. And try by yourself. If nowadays I, I would be in the situation of making the same thing, of course, uh, uh, there will be more resources. Uh, there are a lot of uh, online classes, uh, also one held by Marlon. And, uh, uh, and probably my, um, I will take some sort of different route, but not in terms of, um, I mean, um, um, nowadays, I would I would really have access to to more resources. Yeah, and probably I would also consider some sort of mentorship program. Yeah, yeah, no, of course, like the availability of resources is definitely yeah. a big thing that like now is probably allowing for more shortcuts. Yeah, kind sure. of less googling, less guesswork. Yeah, but also now, nowadays, really, you you have the possi the chance to to take some classes without uh, with having direct feedback from the instructor, and this is a huge plus because uh, when you really can can face with, um, in front of a, of a professional that can give you really really um, precise tips uh, and advices, uh, it really can can speed up your uh, your work and your workflow. No, for sure. I can't agree more when there is like, yeah. when you don't know if you're doing the right thing, like yeah. it can take you like months, like yes. Yeah, to, to, yes. to guess, to guess stuff about that. So, okay. So slowly but surely, let's say like you kept learning ZBrush and then you, you like created more work with that. Yeah. So, uh, do you remember what was your first paid project? Uh, it was a rock, actually. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Modeling a rock for, for 50 bucks. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It's like, hello, everybody out there. Don't aspire for something like, you know. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> Modeling right. a rock. Yeah. Okay. How much would you charge now for modeling the same rock? Uh, I will not model a rock nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, nowadays you can really rely on a scan. So if someone asks me for uh, for a rock, I, I would uh, point them to a to a internet website in which they send, sell uh, uh, rocks and say, "Okay, purchase." <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it costs you less. <laughs> oh my god! This yeah. is amazing. Do you yeah. know where they use the rock? <laughs> I, I really don't, um, probably it was some sort. Of, it was not really a rock. It's um, it's um, an asteroid. Yeah, but oh, sorry, <laughs> uh, Daniel, I don't know this, if it was. Totally made my day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was meant for some sort of um, uh, amateur level uh, feature film. I really don't know. Okay, Didn't well, that's good then. That. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so, um, okay, fine. I assume you didn't model like a lot of rocks then in your career. No, no, only one, that one. Okay. <laughs> no more. Great. So, uh, um, I know you've been like working with like a variety of clients. So, yeah. what you would consider like you know your like major focus or your major sphere of expertise like right now as a okay you know, like right, as right, a now, right now i really do work uh, for the majority of uh, the, my project uh, on uh, 3d print related stuff uh, so mainly collectibles and miniatures uh, so okay my main main uh, field of expertise okay and there are a variety of clients i mean they sure could. Yeah, 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 yeah. The majority of them are into the collectible stuff. So we we are talking about statues uh, and the racing kits, uh, like one quarter, one sixth scale. There are some of them that are in the miniature uh, part, so small miniatures, and also some uh, board games. So you you sculpt miniatures for board games. So this mm -hmm. is okay and is there you know like anything uh, kind of a any specific style that you you would prefer on top of anything else oh well i really don't have a preferred style i mean okay. i i feel like i'm still in search of my own personal style and the style that i uh, prefer most uh, it depends on the period because uh, i work a lot on um, realistic stuff so make some portraits make some uh, realistic figures i really do love cartoon style so it really depends on, on the moment and also for my personal project uh, um, 
I really don't have a, okay. <laughs> a preference. Like, you know, like I think this is a really big question also, though, for especially this is true for 3D artists yeah. because uh, the, 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 the search of personal style, because sometimes you find yourself recreating something from the concept. And then, yes. you know, like uh, there is, I think, a big question of uh, um, if it's your style or if it's the choice of the concept. Um, so, you know, like, how would you see that? Like, what is it? Oh, what is the, well, the style for 3D artists in general? Oh, well, okay. I think that when you work for someone where you are under, um, you're making client works, uh, a huge plus is the ability to switch style. Because, of course, you can always infuse some sort of personal touch in, every, in everything that you do. Because, uh, of course, if I make a realistic character or your husband make uh, the same one, we will end having different, different type of, of look. Because uh, everyone has his own, uh, let's say, uh, fingerprint. But, but of course, uh, when, you, when you make some type of client work, you have to, um, the, the huge effort is to try to put away this, this, uh, this, uh, this personal style, or at least uh, hide as much as possible. Um, so that's it. Um, I mean, uh, the, the personal style uh, refers more to personal works. I okay, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, because uh, in terms of uh, work, uh, um, of, uh, of really works, uh, um, uh, at least in my yeah. personal opinion, uh, a huge plus is, uh, is the ability not, not to put uh, any particular style. So uh, look at the concept and being able to, to follow and uh, recreate the concept as close as possible. Wow, I love that. I think, you know, like, thanks for being honest with that because I think it's, yeah. uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a really big thing also for an artist being able to hide his style and being like neutral about yeah. things and kind of, you know, like saying, okay, like, you know, uh, you're paying me for being the artist of your style. Yeah, yeah, sure. But of course, also this, there is this uh, misconception uh, among a lot of people that uh, if, you, if you don't put your style, you are some sort of monkey. But uh, this is a part of misconception. But, uh, but um, of course, when you work for someone and you have to make your client happy, <laughs> you really have to put yourself somewhat in the, in, the, in the situation of being, let's say, a bit a monkey. Because... Uh, because uh, of course, uh, if the client loves a particular concept and decide that he wants that particular concept, you have to do that. Yes. You really cannot force your client uh, because in the end, uh, the client is the, the person that, that gives you money and pays you <laughs> for, for, for your sure. bills. Uh, and so uh, the real effort, the real goal is, uh, is uh, to, to, to hit that particular target. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, like, uh, and a little bit about your uh, relationship with uh, your clients. So, uh, um, do you do anything actively to like, you know, find more clients or do they pass you from one to another or like, you know, how do you drift from one project to another? Do you have any downtime or like, you know, Oh yeah, um, downtime. You mean uh, periods? Yeah, like in which, uh, yeah, exactly. Working? Oh, yeah. okay. Well, well, it depends. Um, I really don't want to say this too loudly, but uh, it's uh, one or two years that I really don't have any downtime. And in terms of um, uh, making something to find clients, no. Uh, in the last years, I really have uh, recurring clients, uh, and new clients come by. Um, uh, you mean? Uh, I mean. Uh, looking at my works uh, when I publish them in social or my clients publish works. Uh, and, and so um, I really am not so active. Okay. Uh, but of course, uh, back in the days when I started, when I was at the beginning, I, I really, I really searched a lot of work through the internet, contacted clients uh, and contacted when I, when I saw a, a job offering uh, and so on. Mm -hmm. And I so, yeah. yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry for interrupting. So, like, no, nowadays... no, I was saying that nowadays sometimes it can happen that I can spot some job offer and I say, okay, that could be cool if there is a company that I like, a concept that I like. But, but nowadays I'm, I'm, I'm quite, quite busy. I'm likely quite busy. So, I uh, don't have enough time <laughs> to, to find new clients. So. Yeah, no, that's great. I mean, like, I guess like, that's the ideal situation for any artist, yeah. just like being able to focus on your art. Yeah, uh, sure. Just, you know, like, because also we've got like limited number of time, number of hours per day. Yeah. So the more of it goes toward like creation, 
the better, I yes, guess. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Also, also, I, um, I want to specify that I'm not so full of works. I mean, when I'm uh, when I say that, I'm totally busy because uh, uh, you know when you work in some kind of project, uh, special, at least. I feel that I am somewhat slow, uh, so I'm not able to finish a project, uh, let's say in one day or two, and when I'm on a collectible or in studio, it takes, um, it can take also one month to, to be completed. So, so uh, I mean, I have my agenda quite, quite full with just two or three different works. So Okay. Yeah. So like, you know, like if you were to, uh, to speak to somebody who would like to break in the collectibles industry, yeah. um, you know, it's because I know also from a little bit of like personal experience, it's not so easy because, uh, it's like a closed circle of people. Everybody knows yeah. each other and, uh, it's not always advertised. So like, you know, yes. you can't really go to LinkedIn and get a job or like, you can't like start reaching out to people because you don't even know they're not public yeah, um yeah so it looks a little bit like you know like a sect so oh, yeah i oh, think so you know like no, not at, really. at least at least the back end of it so like you know what advice you could give to somebody who would like to create collectibles Okay, yeah, my, my general advice uh, when someone uh, asks me this type of question, not only related to the collectible, but to every type of uh, work field, uh, um, if you want to make collectible, try to, to create a portfolio showing off that you can create collectibles. Because uh, all starts from there. Um, the research for, for clients is something that, is, uh, that always has to happen after you are able to make something because uh, I really could mention a couple of examples. There is uh, this uh, amazing guy that is Daniel Bell. He's a super, super yeah, that's known kind of like artist. The collect collectibles legend. Yeah, yeah, collectibles legend. But I feel that he, he, he started sculpting collectibles first and then searching for jobs because he landed the job uh, with Sideshow. He was really, um, really super known. But, but when he started to create stuff, uh, those stuff uh, were, uh, were uh, picked uh, in uh, forums like Zebra Central or Art Station. They became uh, super famous. There is uh, the famous Magneto statue that he sculpted. And I feel that it was also a custom statue, so it's nothing official, but it was so beautiful and that, that it was uh, really shared by everyone. And he became all of, all of a sudden, not all of a sudden, but he became, became super famous and started working like crazy. So um, my advice is always try first to learn how to create and then, and then um, uh, try to, to be social and find, find jobs and promote yourself. Because uh, uh, if, if you really create amazing stuff, uh, uh, nowadays with ArtStation, with forums, with Facebook, uh, uh, if your stuff is really amazing, uh, a lot of people will start to share it. And so you will become uh, famous, known uh, very yeah. easily. Yeah. yeah, in the industry. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, so basically, uh, did you have any like, you know, viral pieces that like mm -hmm. really like, you know, that you think were um, maybe, I don't want to say game changers, but something of, uh, you know, that, that impacted your career somehow i mean we'll okay. put the we'll put then the link in the show notes and uh, i will show it now on the screen um oh, yeah okay. if you mention something okay um well um i think that there were two two pieces uh, uh -huh. basically uh, i am an old man so uh, <laughs> so back in the days in uh, 2012 maybe i got uh, a top row in zebra central with the uh, uh, joker piece i made the joker fan art and this was a huge game changer because from there i, I really was was shared a lot uh, it was back in the days in which uh, social media were were not so famous so uh, it was all uh, in the forums uh, Ta -da. So, yeah, that, that is, uh, yeah so Ta -da. It, here it we go quite famous <laughs> yeah and from there, I was contacted by a lot of, uh, of uh, companies, also uh, schools uh, to make tutorials and so on. But the so, Joker is amazing. I mean, like, you know, oh, well, I, love, I love the colors and the details. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's an happy accident, of course. <laughs> oh, come but, on. Happy accident. No, no, really, really. Um, 
um, looking now, uh, it doesn't look so amazing to me, but, but of course it was, it was the first one. The second probably, and uh, it really helped me in uh, landing more in the collectible industry was the Charlie Chaplin. Oh, I, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. When I posted it, I remember that I was contacted by a ton of people working in the, in the collectible and racing kits, and uh, I really started to work a lot uh, with those type of clients. Here we go. Let me find the Charlie. Yes, here yeah. we go. Yeah. No, the second one. The well, one with... yeah, that's the, one, that's the earlier one, right? Yeah, yeah. This is the... So, uh, here we go. So, the second one. Yes, this one with the kid. Yeah, yeah. The Charlie the with was, the kid. was a quite, quite, became quite viral. And, uh, and so, uh, it was really spotted by a lot of people working in the collectibles and produ pro producing collectibles. Uh, and so... As I was saying before, uh, the, the matter is uh, creating first. If you create stuff that, uh, that people will like, uh, you will really find a lot of clients and, and people interested. So uh, did, you do, did you make both of those for somebody? Mm -hmm. Like, was that like client work or was it your personal work? Oh yeah, the Joker was a personal work for, for an online contest in uh -huh. an Italian forum. Uh, was just reimagining uh, one of those comic characters. And the second one was for a company, and it's a company with which I work uh, on um, uh, regularly. It's called Infinite Statue, if I can mention it. Mm -hmm, sure. And it's an Italian company, and uh, they are specialized in making uh, actors from the past. So we we are making quite <laughs> quite a lot of them. So uh, and that's yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. But I love the Joker story, you know, like I think it's a, it's a very motivating story how just, you know, like uh, one piece that you make just for a contest, just like, yeah. you know, for something that you don't even think of, you know, as a monetizer or something that can, you know, like give you some, you know, uh, yeah, cash eventually helps you lend a lot of other opportunities. Yes, sure, sure. But, but also, this, uh, this is an advice that I always give to, to people uh, and also to my students. Uh, try to, to always uh, find some time to make your own personal work. Uh, because uh, um, before I was mentioning that when you do client work, you want to put away your style. But you, when you make your personal work, uh, that is the moment in which you, you, you are make, you're, you're making the statement about what you really like to do. Uh, and so I think that it's cool also from an artistic point of view, being able to fully express yourself. So, and you can only do this when you make your own personal work. So, so you said that you're now experimenting with your own style. So what yeah. are like some of the statements that you're making in front of your, for, for yourself now? Like, my statements? So, well, yeah. when I make um, my personal work, in my personal work, uh, my main goal, my main focus is not about aesthetic style, but I always uh, like to tell stories. So Love that. My, my own state, statement is uh, making pieces that uh, really, really uh, speaks about the story. Uh, I really like this. Uh, so, um, for example, in my latest words, there is uh, the toad that, uh, that eats the fairy or uh, the big giant with the balloon uh, with the fairy. Uh, they are on, in a station. I really like to create those sort of dioramas in which there is a, a story uh, because I, I think it's fun. Yeah. yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, the mermaid, sorry, like, yeah, the the girl in the mermaid, I think, as well. Is, is it your first? Oh, the girl in the mermaid is, is, um, is um, from an original, um, an existing concept. So it's not a concept of mine. Okay. So yeah, sometimes me... I also like to, to take concept and experiment with different styles. Oh, I, I think it. I found the toad. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. the toad. Uh, yeah, let me share this the screen now because I think the toad. Oh my God, this has so many details. This one, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was also 3D wow. printed, and I brought them on an immediate miniature contest, and uh, was really wow. appreciated. So yeah. I really like to to create this sort Check of. Check this out! Wow, like um, I can only imagine how it looked when it was 3D printed. Yeah, it looks amazing. Yeah, yeah, I've I've got this in the studio. I'm not taking it because it's very fragile, so I fear to to break it. But but it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Okay. So like, do you like do you create the story? Do you create yeah. the? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Usually, I, um, I'm. Um, 
when I'm not doing anything, I really like to, to imagine stories uh, or come out with uh, with ideas. Uh, they they come uh, by accident, of course. Uh, I remember for the Toad, for example, I was uh, in uh, in Los Angeles during the Zebra Summit, and I was oh. uh, partying wild with Marlon. There was this party, so I imagine the party. Uh, uh, this is my cre- I'm I'm talking about the creative process, and uh, I am also a huge fan of uh, Jean Baptiste Monge. Uh, his style he, he always draws uh, these uh, fairies and gnomes on top of animals, and so I put the two ideas together. And the third one was the toad because I really love toads. When it rains year around, <laughs> you can you can spot a lot of toads. So I composed all the, those three ideas and came out with this idea of making this wild party. Uh, that was somewhat funny because there is a uh, this fairy that probably um, gave beer to the toad. The toad became drunk and uh, he mismatched and thought that the fairy was some sort of fly and and uh, air. So uh, it's like um, having nice ideas and putting all of them together usually. Wow. Well, I'm sure there is like what much more like that is going on, like you know, in the in the artistic imagination. So yeah. that, like eventually, like it all like kind of a you know turns to sculpt later yeah, yeah. on yeah yeah but usually when i make personal works uh, uh, they can really last uh, years because uh, for example the toad uh, it took me two years to tweak stuff uh, nowadays i'm trying to tweak the boogeyman there is another whip in our session uh, right now i really don't like it anymore because uh, <laughs> I rushed this a bit, so I took it back and I'm reimagining it. And that's it. I, I always like to, 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 to create my stories. And uh, as every arti- artistic um, process, uh, you have to uh, look at this. If you don't like, kill your zombies, uh, because uh, yeah. this is the rule. Uh, if, you, if you're not really sure about something, uh, don't fear to destroy it and build it from scratch. Uh, and when you're happy with that, that's it. Yeah, no, of course. But, uh, you know, like, I think it's it's also crazy, like, that you're saying that the project can easily take you up to two years. And probably, you know, when you start it and when you finish it, it's not even the same person, meaning, like, you know, like, you as a person change. Yeah. Literally. Yeah, and, sure. You know, so, like, it, it, to me, it's not surprising that you don't like your work several months later yeah because yeah. of course like you also learn a lot of more like a lot of new new, to- new tools and yeah it just like change the way you think about things yes yes but but of course when it, when it's some sort of personal work it's uh, just finished when you like it uh, of course you can always um, you always have to find a compromise because uh, <laughs> you can always improve your work but but um, um i'm not saying that um, um let me repeat. Uh, uh, of course, uh, you never like it at 100%. But if there is something that you can really feel that is not right, uh, you have to change it. So okay. it's, it's seeing from a different perspective. Uh, so if you, if, you, if you somewhat like it, it's okay. But if uh, you feel that there is something that you really don't like, uh, you really have to change it. Because it's a personal work and nobody is paying you for this. You have no rush, you have no pressure. So uh, it can really stay there for uh, 10 years uh, yeah. or, or not being uh, completed ever. Of course, you're not working on that uh, all the days, uh, every day, etc. But, but that's yeah, it. no, that's, you know, like, that's absolutely fine. One thing is personal liking and, uh, um, and another thing is like your client liking. So, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, um, I actually also wanted to touch the base a little bit on what you think is uh, the success for a digital artist, because now we're talking about, oh, uh, yeah. you know, uh, again, different things like uh, uh, recognition versus mm-hmm. your your success in your own eyes. So, like, what is uh, artistic success for you? Uh, I think that it's more personal uh, in terms okay. of uh, not not recognition from 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 the uh, outer world. Uh, in, in some sort that you have to feel something that you have to feel for by yourself. Uh, um, um, I'm, I will not say about um, I will not talk about being successful. Uh, for me, the real success is uh, to make uh, the things I love uh, and work making the things the thing I love. Uh, of course, sometimes it's not so cool, it's not so so funny because when you have to make client works, uh, 
not always is not not um, always uh, so funny. But for me, the success is this, is living the life the way I want. So um, apart from the peaks on our station, the top pros, uh, the likes in the social, uh, is uh, sitting in front of the computer and making creative stuff and, uh, and being happy with that. Yeah. Wow. Um, interesting. Yeah. Love that. No, absolutely. Like, you know, I can't agree more. I think like, you know, success is very much about like, you know, your satisfaction and like uh, inner peace and happiness yeah. at the end of the day and having yes. your ba- your bills paid as well. Like, Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Of course, uh, having the bills paid may, uh, is part of the equation because <laughs> of course, if you sit in front of the computer all the day and don't get get paid for that, but... But of course, uh, in the end, uh, if uh, if you really can can make a living with uh, with a job, no matter how many money you you earn, uh, and you make something that you love, uh, that is the real success. Uh, what do you think if now, like uh, you uh, saw yourself again with the same question, changing your career or not changing your career, like ten years ago, like would you do it again? Yeah, sure. So you think sure, it was the right course. choice? Yes, yes, yes. 100%? Because I felt it. Yeah, it's like the personal work. When you Uh feel that something is right, it's right. So uh, there is no wrong choice in life. It's uh, it's, uh, just making well your math, taking uh, some decision with some sort of responsibility. But once that you feel that it's the right choice, it's the right choice. Uh, It could also have not ended so, so well because I was somewhat lucky because I took a very risky decision and it paid off but even even if it didn't pay uh, it was okay because uh, that was the thing that I really wanted to do wow this is so inspiring you know like I really yeah. admire when people make strong decisions about their life and you know like follow through and then eventually yeah. but, like, but the real success is not about the success of a decision I mean uh, okay it's not uh, the, the 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 result of the decision is making the decision because you really uh, never know uh, how uh, some decision will end up being but if in the moment that you take uh, one decision uh, you feel that that is the right decision. Uh, even if uh, in the end it doesn't pay off, uh, it's okay. I mean, uh, I think um, at least for me it always worked uh, um, using this particular state of mind uh, and not caring about the, the result, uh, but, but, but the process of, uh, of uh, doing something. If I, if I really am sure that that is the thing that I want to do, it's okay for me. You are more like, you know, the, the free agent. Yeah, your career was really about your driven by you internally yeah. so where do you see you will take yourself in this journey in about like 10 years time do you see yourself uh, you know like working on more ambitious projects or do you see yourself you know having just more free time or what is it like for you where do you want to go <laughs> well this is a very tough question. I know. <laughs> I, I'm not sure that I really do want to work for more ambitious project, uh, at least in terms of visibility. Um, okay. I mean, because uh, it, it really puts a lot of pressure on you when you work for huge companies and you are under the radar, even if I made some sort of huge projects. Uh, for me, the most important thing is to always try to, to improve myself uh, so no matter how big the project is, uh, is trying to make always uh, better and better stuff. So um, uh, that is the most most important. So I'm, I'm I hope to to see myself in ten years being uh, 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 better in doing what I do and. Um, still doing what i do of course <laughs> yeah well i'm sure that's gonna happen you know like yeah, uh, well, let's it's cross really, the fingers <laughs> oh come on <laughs> all right all right daniela i'm gonna jump to the questionnaire then okay uh, yeah. so I'll remind you there are like 10 questions you can answer in like uh, one sentence or like one word whatever okay. you feel like uh so i'll start the phrase and you can continue my favorite my favorite place in the world is here, of course, my studio uh, closer to the bedroom in which my wife is. So, okay, yeah. amazing. Um, while I'm working, I listen to uh, myself cursing the client. <laughs> <laughs> 
happens to the best of us. Um, my best way to gain inspiration is? Oh, thinking. Okay. My big life goal? Ah, oh, living. Okay. My favorite drink? Oh, no, this is not the right moment to ask me this question because uh, it's five months that I don't drink, drink alcohol anymore because I really want to lose some weight. So now, right now, my favorite drink is water. Okay. First thing I do in the morning after I wake up? Turn on the computer. Okay. Uh, if I didn't become a digital artist, I would be? A waiter. Okay. <laughs> a book or movie that I can recommend? I thought about it because uh, you sent me the questionnaire, but right now I forgot. Uh, the Untouchables, yeah, movie. One thing that motivates me to work? Money. <laughs> <laughs> no. Love that. And so top three things on your bucket list. Bucket list uh, is... Uh, yeah, so something that you just like really want to do in your life. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, uh, no, we cannot say this during the podcast. Uh, <laughs> okay. <not really. laughs> okay, fine. Done, Daniele. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much for being on the show. That's been um, amazing. I had a lot of great laughs. Uh, yeah, it's been so much fun. And uh, I hope you had some fun too and a nice yeah, break. a lot of fun. And, and a nice break from your... Um, character creation routine yeah yeah that, that was really fun sorry for my english but uh, oh, come on like i don't everybody... talk a lot so oh come on all right thanks daniele i'll well, uh, thanks see to you. you later thanks for listening guys a little preview daniele will actually be one of the co-instructors at the next intake of art heroes program so if you want to learn more about that go to artheroes.co and check stylist character program Cheers. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for listening to Art Heroes Podcast. Check out www.artheroes.co for show notes, more interviews, and free tools made for you by our team of mentors. Tune in next week for more inspiration and keep up the great work, hero. Mm-hmm.